namihi ki a koutou katoa. Um, e rere kou mai te awa nui, mai te kahui maunga ki tangaro, ko au te awa, ko te awa ko au. Um, Wano ora, the flex fruits. And I heard someone um, ask about who here was from the public and private sector and who of those represent um, NGOs. And I wondered how many people would raise their hands and say that they represent Wano today. Can I see those hands? Oh, see, there's only a few. It's amazing. You know, because we all represent Wano in every sector that we work in. Um, what about navigators? How many navigators are here today? Can you please raise your hands? Again. So uh, uh, it's probably my holistic um, mindset in terms of Wano order, but um, in my world, everyone would raise their hands when we're talking about Wano order and being Fano and being navigators. Um, Fano order is not about politics and it's not about providers. It is about the best state of well-being that we can get for our whānau, hapu and iwi. Unfortunately, we have to navigate ourselves through a system that exists in our day, and we've heard um, all the arguments around the system and all the ways in which we know as a people that if we could really um, put uh, wānau ora into our own safe hands, then uh, we would probably not produce the policies and procedures, organisations and things to achieve the outcomes for whānau, hapu and iwi that we currently have in our current state. Today we're going to demonstrate um, for you Wano order the road less travelled. And it's done through the eyes of um, us in a small hometown community of Taumaranui where I've lived for the majority of my life. Um, and ha what it takes to actually navigate our whānau, hapu and iwi through um, systems so that we can get results for our families that, that sometimes are um, the things that we can't get out of. If we could just go home to the marae and live our normal lives, that would be fine, but we, we often have to take care of our health needs, our social needs, education and justice for us as individuals, but also for our tamariki, for our mokupuna, and for our kuraua and kuia. Um, so we're just going to, um, I'm going to introduce to you today um, Christine Breers. Chris is the Chief Executive at Kōkiri Trust, and um, she's going to have a talk about her organisation, and then um, hand back to me to talk about the model and the pathways that we developed in a journey along the way. Kia ora. Tēnā koutou, rauranga tērama, tēnei te mihi, kia koutou. Ki ngā taonga, i wainganui a mātou. Ta, uh, Dane Tariana, Whaia Tariana. <laughs> uh, ta, meihana, matua, whatarangi, tēnā koutou. A ki te koumātua e whakamoimiti mō tātou, tēnā koe. Uh, ko Ngāti Mania, Poto Te Iwi, uh, Ngāti Tama, i te taha o to, toku whā, Papa, uh, i te taha o toku Mama, ko Mania Poto, ko Ngāti Raukawa. Tēnā koutou. Ko Christine Breers ahau, ko au te Tumuake o te Taumaranui Community Kōkiri Trust. I have to say that I stand here with no academic background, nor do I have a background in the medical environment. However, my parents were farmers. I know how to milk a cow. I know how to uh, cook a big pot of porridge. I also know how to work to be a rousy in a wool shed. And I guess those basic skills have actually directed me back to work with our community at the coalface. Um, oh, kia ora. Um, I also, in regards to the medical environment, I reflect on when I was a little girl. I did think about being a dental therapist, 
And I recall finding little pumice stones at the back of the house, and I would get little sticks and pretend that they were the drills that you saw in the, in, in the um, dental therapist's room. And I would drill holes in the pumice, and I'd create fillings out of mud and water. And then I'd fill in the hole, and that's how I was. The, it's as close as I got to being a dental therapist. <laughs> However, my journey and the development of Huwara in Tauranui. 1989, we created a Māori Health Committee for the purpose of taking a closer look at the health status of our people. And in 1996, we became a charitable trust, and that began the development of our organisation. Our first, my first, um, Oh, I was a self-appointed manager, and I was the policy maker. I set the salaries, and I was the everything. My two first kai mahi were, one of them was Frana. Frana was a young lass. She had a couple of children. Now, there's a story behind that, too. We had a pilot program called Whakarongu Mai, and I had to... Um, promote this kaupapa among the ko, ngā kohanga reo and our whānau. However, it wasn't that easy, so I decided that I would look at home-based hui. Anyway, here's Frana I met down the street, walking with her pram and her tamariki. And I walked up to her and I said, Dear, would you like to have a home-based hui at your house uh, to address glue ear? She said, I beg your pardon. I said... <laughs> Dear, you know, um, it's about um, the taringa of our tamariki, how to care for them. And she said, oh, no, thank you. And I said to her, how about if I gave you $5 a head for every whānau you bought in? Well, that changed the story. <laughs> her house was full of whānau. I think I still owe her some money from that hui. <laughs> but anyway, um, 1996 began our journey. We had two kaimahi. Today, we have 100 plus kaimahi. Doctors, nurses, mental health practitioners, early childhood teachers, many of them were home growing. Because if we reflect back to when um, Māori providers were established, the opportunity of mahi within them was in a kaiafina role. Now, the Kayafina's purpose was to open the doors for, uh, for the clinical practitioners and for the Crown agencies. And, I mean, when we, at the initial, initial beginning of our development, in my head was, Māori will be, be their own educators. So being a kaiafina to open door for others wasn't the go. So we began growing our own and putting our kaiafina on pathways of um, learning. And many of them are still with me today. They're mental health practitioners, they're family start workers, they're early childhood um, teachers, and um, they are working within the kaupapa of whānau ora. And I say that because I was got, I'm sort of getting a bit muddled here, but we have a one funded navigator in our organisation, funded through Fano ora. We have a population of 7,000 people. 60% of those people a high priority. One navigator doesn't even touch the bottom of our issues. So during the time of the, um, when TPK funded collectives to transform into integrated health services, we were to touch the lives of 30 whānau. In our eyes, that did nothing. So to meet the needs of more, we turned the whole organisation 
upside down and transformed it into a whānau order service, which meant my family start kaimahi, my early childhood education are, are teachers, my social workers are all navigators, and we work on the one kaupapa of whānau ora, which in fact means we have an organisation where every door is the right door. Where whānau, my practitioners, serve our whānau by listening, not doing to or doing for. In fact, supporting them to do for themselves. And that is an action. And it's really quite exciting because it is not something easy to do. When you have mindsets that I am a nurse and that's all I'm going to do, and oh, I am a social worker and that is what I do. No, no, not in our organisation. We had a mental health nurse driving down the road. No, it wasn't, it was our mobile disease management nurse who's the navigator. She's driving down the road and she sees one of our clients who is a mental health sufferer. He's driving down the road with a trailer full of furniture. So she looks. Now, in the past, she wouldn't have taken any notice. But our co-papa actually ensures that our staff knows what everybody's doing. So she sees this, this gentleman, she follows him, and he pulls up outside a shed. And she said, hey, what's going on here? He says, I've been evicted from my house. Anyway, to cut a short story, a long story short, she ended up finding him a dec decent accommodation and um, some putea to help him on his way. So that's a mobile nurse stepping out of her, 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 her um, role and stepping into the shoes to support our mental health sufferer. Um, what else, sorry, uh, model of care. So, we have been listening to, um, oh, we know and continue to be reminded of the difficulties faced by Fano to achieve what I'm talking about. Fragmented services, multiple services involved resulting in five cars up the driveway. Lack of information sharing between agencies. Therefore, poor, poor coordination of care. Poor engagement with Fano. No connectedness, no whanaungatanga, no whakapapa. Separation and roles causing duplication gaps, poor planning. Overall, poor quality of care and confused Fano. Our Fano order model addresses all of those issues. Fragmented services, five cars up a driveway, is overcome by a multidisciplinary meeting, facilitated by a whānau champion or a nominated navigator from an NGO Māori, if it's a Māori family. But people do have choices. Key stakeholders identified via a whānau order assessment would be at this meeting. At the conclusion, a plan of action is drawn up and is given to every key stakeholder around that table, including the whānau. Everyone is responsible for making that plan work. It's giving our whānau a voice and it's empowerment. And when we hear one plan, this is it. It's not the one plan that MSD or any of other, those other Crown agencies are talking about. This is the one plan. And so I'm going to hand it over to Frana now to explain further. All right, Frana? Okay. Kia ora. Oh, I was enjoying that because I watched the time pass by and I thought, yes. Um, but one of the things that I thought it's really important to talk about is the fact that while we're talking about a provider service, we're talking about a provider that employs Wano, hapu and iwi. So the majority of our people are working with their own people. Um, all right, how do I do this? Okay, where's our more? That one? 
Okay. So the first thing, see how it's got up there, Fana Water Services? And we all know that Fana Water is in a service. When I, talk, I asked Wilder Gardner about this, and he said to play the game. So we tried to play the game a bit in the early days. And this is about, in the majority of Māori um, health services, they are contracted and have all of these types of contracts. Now, I'm not going to read them all out to you, but they're cross-sector, so they come from education, health, justice, and um, where else? Oh, well, anywhere else. But those sectors... And um, behind each of those lines will be a contract, a report, and a whole set of indicators and outputs. Now, if you align all those outputs, you can often see that they're all connected. The trouble is, is that um, the majority of time there are individuals who carry contracts and have job descriptions that just focus on that particular contract. So the experience for our whanau is something like this. So this is a, obviously we haven't got great demograph uh, thing people that do these, but this is a, a, a pregnant mum with a tamariki who wants to stop smoking. So they will often have to see a GP. They'll probably be, be enrolled in Family Start. Um, they'll have to see tamariki order, and then they'll get mamas and pepes. This is old state, right? And then you'll get, oh, that's Child, Youth and Family, which we all know now is the Ministry of Valuable Children. Uranga Tamariki. <laughs> and what will happen here is, is that this mum, who will now have to have six assessments, six, six visits, and God knows what else, will probably do that. So she'll go, and we'll miss the opportunity. Now, the productivity report um, talked about, and we're particularly interested in that D, which is a complex needs but can't navigate the system to coordinate our services. And what we learnt along the way of our development, is that read because I'm over time? It's two minutes, okay. Is, is that um, the system isn't broken. Oh, no, yes it is. The system's broken. Our people aren't, all right? Our people aren't broken. Because initially, when we first started, we thought we were. We actually thought that, how the heck are we going to fix all this justice, corrections, SIFs? How can we undo all of that? And as we tried to navigate it through creating our own system, which was built by Wano around what would work for them, they know the system better than anybody. They told us how, when to drop them off at the police station, when they'd get fed, you know, when to pick them up, all of that. That was the way to do it. We learnt that actually the our people aren't broken, the system's broken, and it breaks us every day. So here we go. We just systemised that. It was quite easy. All you have to do is have one assessment, one point of entry, one engagement, and that assessment crossed across sector. It just didn't look at, oh, how do we get our outputs and serve ourselves for the funding that we get? How do we actually achieve one or order outcomes and what they actually come to us for? Because often they'll come to us for something and they'll tell us, oh, yeah, you've got all your strings attached, eh? What else do we have to do? So we had a whānau order assessment that looked at, and, um, it looked at the house itself, the, how, the whare they lived in, the whānau that were in it, their finance, their health. Now, the navigators, they got all titchy. They were like, why are we talking about housing when we don't provide housing? Well, housing actually mattered three years later when TPK brought out a housing policy and came back to us and said, oh, do you have any whānau that need housing? And we said, yep, 212. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, oh, yeah, but can we kind of like, how many can we get now? And we said, 212, and we'll tell you who they are. Because we, because we were engaging with whānau, we could turn numbers into names. And that's the most dangerous thing about data and why everybody wants it is because it's really easy to turn numbers into names. And we saw it all the way along. So here, whānau order pathway, one single point of entry, assessment and plan, one plan. So we, you know, often have to partner with a whole lot of people just to get a few things done. There's them, I'm going really fast because I've got four seconds, all right? Okay, there's the pathway. So that, pulled in lots of other people. So now we had pharmacists, 
public health nurses, mental health workers, maternity nurses, nurses, all of these other people from government sector being Wano Order Navigators, not just the ones within our organisation. How do we pull the capacity that already exists within the government to actually you know, turn this around and put it on its head? I'm going to skip a whole lot now because this is just our, these are all our demographics, but I want to go to that. How do I go backwards? Can I go backwards? Okay. Hey? Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. So we did, and now these are your data people, we did 2,422 one order assessments. In there were 2,535 individuals within those Fano. So if you look at the data, you can see that even the navigators were still concentrating on individuals and a couple of people. Because I know, you know, I count for nine just in my house. So we knew we got to get better at that. But the thing is, is that at least we were kept collecting the right data and we had the bits right. And there, the Fano plans and goals developed. But this is the one that turns the curve because this one shows that we concentrated on Wano order outcomes, not just our outputs. And if you see here, so we only had our current funding and one navigator, so we didn't get more, is, is that if you look in the green, the health and disability, that was all the contracts that I showed you before that we were funded to, to achieve. So all the outputs were met there at 100%, but in the population of people, 57% of outcomes happened as well. So I actually said to John Key then, you got more bang for your buck because you actually got twice as much as you paid for. Um, so, I mean, um, this is just an example of how um, you can operationalise one order within, because we have to protect our whanau against um, all of the impact of the interventions that happen from other agencies. And many a time along this journey did I tell mothers who were scared about going to FGCs because they knew that they were going to get their children taken from them, not to go. Don't go. And you know what would happen? They'd shut the case. Now, if they went, they probably would have lost their kids. So, you know, we've got to actually start to stand up for our tamariki, for our mokopuna, and don't just roll over and accept that because a, a, an agency is involved, that that's kind of okay because it's not. Anyway, I think that that's enough. So, um, nā mihi kia katoa, tēnā katoa. Kia ora.